Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Hope you're doing great. Eric here with Two Guys in a Cooler, and today we're going to be making a teriyaki style of salami. So if you like salami and you like teriyaki, stick around. This salami is going to be 100% pork. So I've got 70% lean pork, 30% pork back fat. You can also use pork shoulder. That generally has a good lean to fat ratio. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut this up into small chunks. This is what it's going to look like before it goes into the freezer. We want this partially frozen before we grind it. Now, I'm going to be using 61 millimeter collagen casings. These are synthetic casings from the sausage maker. We're just going to soak those for 15 to 20 minutes in some lukewarm water. Make sure we fill them up and set that to the side. I also want to add a protective mold culture known as Mold 600. The actual name of the mold is Penicillium nalgiavensi, and it protects your salami from unwanted molds. It's totally edible, and to prepare it, I'm just adding a little bit to some distilled water, giving it a mix, and then setting it on the counter. We just want to let it rehydrate for a couple hours. In addition to the mold, we want to add a bacterial starter culture. This culture is called Flavor of Italy, and this is going to enhance the color, the flavor, the aroma, but most importantly, it's going to help lower the pH during fermentation, which is one of the safety hurdles in producing good quality salami. So we're going to mix that with a little distilled water, and we're going to let it rehydrate for only about 30 minutes. This doesn't have to rehydrate too long. Okay, our meat has properly been chilled. It's below 34 degrees Fahrenheit and it's time to grind it up. And we're gonna grind our meat and fat together on a six millimeter plate. The size plate that you choose to use is completely up to you. If you choose a coarser plate, so let's say you go with an eight millimeter or a 10 millimeter, you're gonna end up with a slightly different mouthfeel and a slightly better particle definition. And so I suggest experiment with different sizes and experience the textures and presentations that each one has to offer. Personally, I use all different size plates depending on uh, what salami I'm making. Once we're done grinding, I'm gonna go ahead and re-chill it. I want the temperature of the meat to be under 34 degrees Fahrenheit through the entire process. All right, our meat is re-chilled and it's now time to mix everything up. And I didn't show you the spices that we're gonna be using, but in the description box below, you'll find a link for the actual recipe. But we're gonna be using salt, cure number two. We're using dextrose, which is a sugar to help feed the bacteria. I've got ginger powder, Szechuan pepper, and then we're gonna be using some non-fat dry milk. And of course, we're gonna be adding a little teriyaki sauce. Now, we don't wanna make our salami too salty. So let me show you how to figure out how much salt is in each serving uh, that's in this jar. First thing we need to do is look at the serving size. It says serving size, one tablespoon. All right, so we'll store that information. And it says the amount of sodium is 620 milligrams. So that's per serving. All right, so what we're gonna do is multiply 620 milligrams times 2.5, and that's gonna give us 1,550. We're then gonna divide 1,550 into 1,000, and that's gonna give us 1.55. And that's how many grams of salt are in each serving of this teriyaki sauce. So in this case, 1.55 grams, per tablespoon. And the reason you're going to want to know that is because once you add however much teriyaki sauce you're going to add, you can then make up the difference in, you know, regular salt. All right. Does that make sense? If you got a question, leave it in the comment section below. All right. So that's the teriyaki. This is the Szechuan peppercorn. We're going to grind that up in our mortar and pestle. And this is a very interesting peppercorn. I mean, it's slightly lemony. It's almost got a numbing effect when you eat it. So that's going to be an interesting addition to this sausage. All right, let's get everything mixed. We've got our spices in. We're now going to add our teriyaki sauce. And the total salt content in this sausage is 2.75%. So we're using about a quarter cup of teriyaki sauce. The rest of it is going to be made up in kosher salt and cure number two. We're now going to add our starter culture. It's been rehydrating for about 30 minutes. And I'm going to have all the details of this salami in the description box below in the event that you need to kind of use it as a reference guide. After just a couple minutes of mixing, the batter smells amazing. It looks really nice, really sticky. You know, when you grab a little handful of it, it's going to stick to your hand. That's exactly what's happening right here. So it's time to go ahead and get this into our sausage stuffer and put it into its casing. All 
Rider teriyaki salami is in its casing. I've reserved just a little bit of the mincemeat that was in the hopper and wrapped it in some cling film. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do with that here in a little bit. As far as the salami goes, we're going to push everything down. And then we're going to give it a nice little bubble knot at the very top so that we can securely hang it in our dry curing chamber. We're going to go ahead and poke out any air pockets with a sausage poker. And then we're going to go ahead and give this a little tie. Now, it's a little tricky to get this really tight with one person. And I'm actually working on a video to demonstrate, you know, the top knots that every sausage salami maker ought to know. And in that video, we're going to take everything nice and easy. So if you want to see that video, be sure to give this a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. At this point, I'm going to add my mold culture. This is the mold 600 that we prepared at the beginning of this video. Now you can add it before fermentation or after fermentation. Either way is fine. I like to add it before to give it a little head start at that room temperature that it's going to be sitting at. And I like to brush it on because it conserves the most amount of product and it gives it nice even coverage. But you could spray it on, dip it, you could even soak your casings in it and all that will work fine. All right, so let's go ahead and weigh this salami. This is the absolute best indicator to let you know when your salami is done. We're going to write down the actual weight. So that's the green weight right here. And then we're going to write down our target weight. And for me, I like a salami that's a little firm. So anywhere between 35 and 40% weight loss. For this particular salami, I think I'm going to aim for a 40% weight loss. So all we're going to do is subtract 40% from our actual weight. And that's going to give us our target weight. So once we hit 574 grams then our salami is ready to go. And that's it. So at this point, we're just going to tie that up and we now need to let our salami ferment. This is where the bacteria that we've added eat the sugar that we added and release lactic acid. And that lactic acid is going to drop the pH, enhance the color, enhance the aroma, enhance the flavor. And so a lot of stuff microbiologically is going to be going on over the next 24 hours. So to ferment your salami with flavor of Italy, you're going to want to put it in an environment that's between 75 and 85 Fahrenheit or 23 to 29 Celsius. You want your humidity to be pretty high, like 90%. Normally, this bacteria takes between 18 to 24 hours to ferment properly, and your target pH is going to be anywhere between 4.9 and 5.2. I generally just wrap it in cling film and set it on my counter because my kitchen is normally around... 75 80 degrees fahrenheit but you can also place this into a fermentation box or you could wrap it in cling film and place it into your oven with the light on it really doesn't matter where you place it just as long as these conditions are met all right it's now the next day it's been roughly about 22 hours give or take and we're going to be using a ph meter by a pair of instruments this is the one with bluetooth capability so i'm shooting the information over to my phone the uh, little bit of mincemeat that we separated at the beginning, that's what this looks like. And the reason we're gonna test this for the pH is so we don't disturb our actual chub. This pH meter, incredibly easy to operate. Just turn it on and stick that spear tip directly into the meat. And this works great for liquids, for solids, for cheese, for wine, alcohol. And notice on my phone, my pH is reading 5.1. 5.11, there we go. Well within the range and it's now time to start drying. I'm gonna be using a modified refrigerator to dry our salami. And at the end of this video, I'll post a video link to show you how we built ours. Very simple to build. Basically we have a humidifier, a dehumidifier, some controllers, and then of course the refrigerator. And that keeps the humidity and the temperature well within the right area. If you have a basement or cellar and the humidity is right, you can easily just hang this in your basement or cellar, just like I'm doing here, and it should dry perfectly. The trick here is to have it dry nice and even. So you don't really want too much airflow. You want the humidity to stay relatively high at about 80%, and you want the temperature to remain about an average of 55 degrees or 13 Celsius. Our target weight loss is 40%, and like I said earlier, basement cellar, modified refrigerator, or even a cave are all acceptable places uh, to hang and dry your salami. It's been roughly two months, and for me, 62 millimeter casing generally takes about 60 days. And this is what our salami chamber looks like. Uh, notice we've got beautiful white penicillium nalgia vinci growing all on the salami. It smells incredible. We've got that nice earthy mushroomy aroma, so this should be really interesting. Let's go ahead and give this a cut and see what it tastes like.
All right, everybody, moment of truth. Here it comes. How does the teriyaki salami taste? Giving it a glance, looks like it's got a nice leathery finish. Great texture. You know, when you tug on the meat, absolutely holds together beautifully. Specks of Szechuan pepper throughout. All right, so far so good. Let's just give it a bite. Mm. Oh, wow. Oh, that's interesting. I mean, this is beautiful. It's uh, a little sweeter than our typical salami. You're definitely getting that teriyaki flavor. The ginger notes, the Szechuan pepper is actually coming through really nice. A little citrusy, very different and very interesting salami and one I hope you get a chance to try. If you have any questions on how to make the teriyaki salami, leave them in the comment section below. And as always, if you found this video entertaining or got anything out of it, smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.